Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Starship Trooper Extermination. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have a, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divided by two. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically. And you just lower the software like that. And you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software. And also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, photo window mode, super important to use full screen. Borderless and window mode was causing me some stuttering. So really important for the resolution. Make sure that you're playing native with your monitor. So if you have like a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. If you have a 4K monitor, go with 4K. I don't recommend to upscale this game. So stay at 100% right now for the resolution scale. For the FPS limit, I just uh, unlocked it because I want the lowest input lag. But honestly, if you, you have some struggle with your thermals on your CPU or GPU, sometimes it's better to just lock your FPS with the amount of Hertz that you have on your monitor. So for example, if you have a 144 Hertz monitor, just lock your FPS at 144. For the master quality, just go with custom because we're going to edit some anti-aliasing. The first one, if you compare high to off, you can expect 9% boost in your FPS. Not a huge fan of the anti-aliasing in this game. It, the game feels very blurry at eye, so I recommend to go with off. But if you don't like aliasing in the game, just start with low and you will see that it will do the job and you will uh, see uh, very well, honestly, in the game. For the view distance, this one have a huge impact. If you compare epic to low, you can expect 15% uh, difference in your FPS. I don't recommend necessarily to play at low. Uh, the view distance is too low for me. So start at medium and look at your FPS. If you're fine with it, maybe you can go all, uh, also at high, but it really depends on your rig. For the shadows, this is pretty much the parameter that will provide you the most of your fps if you compare epic to low you can expect 20 percent boost in your fps and honestly shadows is not really important in this game so i really recommend to everybody just put it at low and it will really help with your fps post processing you have a couple of uh, options again epic to low uh if you just want pure cl clarity and fps go with low if you want a decent uh image quality i recommend to go with medium i saw two percent difference between low and medium for post processing so that's why it's not a huge deal for texture if you have eight gig of vram and more go with epic six gig at i four gig at medium and if you have less than four gig on your vram on your gpu go with low for the effect, this one will you will not necessarily see a big increase in your FPS when you will just look at the map. It's more like when you're fighting, when we see explosion, when you kill like some aliens and stuff like that. If you're dropping like crazy, it's probably because of your effect. Don't go too crazy with this one. I recommend to go with medium. You will have a decent uh, image quality. And uh, if you're struggling and you're still getting some crazy drop, go with low. I deactivate motion blur because uh, I don't like this effect in any game. So that's why if you want pure visibility, just deactivate it. I'm not using the screen space global illumination. So another 4% boost in your FPS over there. I'm not using the uh, Intel XESS. Uh, honestly, I'm not a fan of this, this uh, technique. Uh, FSR 2.0 is a lot better and DLSS a lot more better also. So I'm not sure why they choose uh, this one. I'm pretty sure they're going to add more after the early access. And the last one is the field of view. Normally, I play at 90, but don't go too crazy with your uh, field of view. You will lose a lot of FPS. So I recommend to start at 70. Look at your FPS. If you're fine with it, 
just increase your field of view. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my Starship Trooper Extermination Guide. If you have any question, just come in, in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.